Good morning. I'm in front of Yellowstone's Old Faithful Geyser. Yellowstone's Old Faithful Geyser here at the Yellowstone National Park in Wyoming goes off about every 90 minutes. That consistency draws the kinds of crowds that you see all day long, every day. And they can they come here to come see this geyser blow off. It's quite amazing. So why is Old Faithful so so uh, attractive? It's because of the consistency. Other geysers that go off intermittently and can't be predicted, people can't plan their lives about when they want to see the geyser go off and see it work. Old Faithful attracts them here because it's so faithful. In computer systems, we have systems that are that might be called Old Faithful. <laughs> I've worked on one of them for a good portion of my life. It's called the mainframe. And on the mainframe, it can run multiple operating systems. One of the key operating systems that's really at the core of old faithful mainframes is called ZOS. ZOS is, it's a Z, and IBM uses the word term, the letter Z, to denote zero downtime. The mainframes are faithful. They're old faithful machines because they run consistently around the clock, 24 hours a day. Some of the systems haven't had downtime in years. It's incredible what these systems are able to do and how they're able to do it. ZOS as a, as a system runs the backbone of so much of our financial world. It's quite amazing what ZOS is able to do, just like Old Faithful. But it's time for us to have a renewal of the mainframe. These systems in some instances were, were built 40 and 50 years ago. And the computing capacity available at that time precluded certain things from even being considered being done. You could not use much computing capacity, and so they were written in such a way that they got rid of data quickly. You, you decided what perspectives you were going to want to see from the data, and then that's what the data gave you. And everything else, all the detail was archived and thrown away because it was just too expensive to use. We know today that the use of data, that there's many perspectives maintained in data. A lot of different things that you can see when you look at data. You might be looking at one perspective right now to Old Faithful, but you walk over, you know, 15 yards that way, and you'll have a completely different view of Old Faithful. The same thing's true of your data. When you set it up and you ask this question of it and you create the query processes that show you this, it's fixed. But if you can take your data and walk 15 yards away from it, you can get a whole different perspective out of what the data does. We require, in this day and age, that sort of capability. And doing that requires a renewal and change in the way our systems were fundamentally constructed. One of the things that happened in building financial systems is we separated transaction processing from ledger keeping. But this aspect of analyzing data over time is really what a ledger is about. A ledger keeps track of positions over time. And so these two things being separated has created problems where we can't see data over time in the transaction processing world. If we could, we could open new forms of transaction processing and new forms of trust and new forms of detection because we can see what's been going on over time. All of those sorts of ideas are something that I'm exploring in a separate project called shareledger.org. Anyone that wants to be part of that and, and learning and figuring out how we share data more effectively in ledgers, how we take something like blockchain, which is really a transaction system, except for the wallet, how do we take that and create a true ledger out of that that tracks positions over time? And how do we share that, like the idea of blockchain, so that we get efficiencies by having people share that data in counterparty situations? All of that is part of shareledger.org. Other initiatives, though, that are going on in this space to renew the mainframe include the Linux Foundation's Open Mainframe Project. The Open Mainframe Project is dedicated to developing and promoting open source on the mainframe. 
there's projects there that are doing, you can do open source work today on the mainframe with things like Zoe, which is, gives you a, a whole new user interface to interact with the mainframe. And with the uh, Geneva ERS, which helps you build analytical systems. Spark runs on ZOS and you can use Python on ZOS. The open source as an idea is important because it opens up the community collaboration and creativity of many large groups of people to make possible new kinds of functionality. Vibrancies of platforms are can be measured in one sense by the number of developers that are on those platforms because the number of developers determines the number of functions the platform has, the new things that are developed and created. It's important to go revitalize the mainframe to rebuild these financial systems which are stagnant, which haven't been migrated very well to other platforms because of the nature of security and reliability on the mainframe. We really have to work on that more seriously. Now, one of the other projects that I'm involved with with the Linux Foundation, besides Geneva ERS, is the OpenZia OS Enablement Project, OSI. OSI is dedicated to the idea that to have open source be effective, people have to have access to the operating system, which is challenging. This ZOS is still a commercial offering from IBM. Some people think that IBM should just give it away for free. But let's be honest here. It's important for IBM to continue to make money. And ZOS is part of that making money. That has to happen even with open source projects. You have to have ways of making money. So simply giving away ZOS is not really going to be the answer to this problem. It would degrade the system. It would make it less useful. It would make people, it would create crises if that were done, to be honest with you. The innovation that goes on behind it from a commercial sense is important for it to be funded. But at the same time, those that are working on that commercial success they are disparaging of those that want to create a more open environment. Sometimes it becomes a, a, a battle between these hobbyists, as they call them, and the professionals. And I've been told recently about this battle and how, how pitted it can be at times. I think it's terrible. If, if a, a hobbyist who's had a long career on ZOS and a professional working with ZOS are invited to go to a college university to talk to the top you know computer science people that you know undergrads in the world and if in any time in that lecture the two of them expose the conflict between them they're going to lose the top students out of the class because people don't want to be involved in conflict well let's lay the conflict down and say we've got to figure out from where we are right now how to make ZOS more accessible for more people. There are accessibility places. There are ways of going and experiencing ZOS. There are trial systems. There are product systems that allow you to get in and test. There are even communities that do give access to new people to Z environments. And the Open Mainframe Project is promoting that and, and investing in, in that space as well. But there's an idea here that goes further than that that kind of started me down the Aussie project. Uh, I looked at, I got for myself a Raspberry Pi, a very small little computer. It's about that big, it cost me $40, $60 or something. And the idea behind the Raspberry Pi was that they wanted to allow people to experiment on the edge of safety in their computer systems, which most of us don't do with our core laptops any longer because we use those for our email and our financial systems and, and our social media and, and everything else. We don't go change fundamental settings in the configuration of the laptop and see if the laptop works anymore. Raspberry Pi was built in order to allow people to do that, allow them to experiment on the edge of safety. Well, that experimentation on the edge of safety is a feature that we need in the ZOS world. We need to be able to experiment with open source. We need to enable new people to go get on the system and see what they can do and figure out and make mistakes and learn from their mistakes, get to the edge of safety, 
find they have to re-image the thing. Yeah, you know, ZOS doesn't run so well on the chip that's in the uh, Raspberry Pi today. Maybe that's a problem for performance and it would, you know, not the experimenters would give up too quickly. Maybe we need a real Z chip in that environment. Maybe we need to have better access to the emulators that are out there that allow people to understand Z. That's all part of how do we make this happen while protecting the commercial interest of those who are involved? How do we make this happen and how do we make it more efficient in the Aussie project? That work effort, I think, is, is important for the renewal of the mainframe in some way. These mainframe systems, going back to share a ledger uh, purpose for just a minute, we've known for a while that measurement allows people to understand the world better. It tells you what you do well and what you don't do well, what you should do more of and what you should do less of, where you should do it. All of those things come out in a certain sense from the financial systems in a narrow way today, maybe in, in broader ways in the future. Well, there's a whole uh, large portion of the world's population who have no access to measurement systems. They don't own their own financial data. How can we open up and use shared ledgers to allow them to own their own financial data? How can we grow this so that the poorest people in the world have access to their financial data and can measure their financial lives? That's the purpose of the Share a Ledger project, open mainframe project, to promote open source on the mainframe. Posi project, giving access to, trying to build access for that, that development and use of the mainframe system. And Geneva ERS, the other project I'm involved with, that is a scan engine that allows us to build large applications on ZOS, use the data that we've captured on ZOS in effective ways and use it very efficiently by lots of different people. All of these things are elements of open source renewal on the mainframe. I'm happy to be here today as part of the Open Mainframe Project Summit. I'm happy to be here at Old Faithful that's going off the mainframe. It's old faithful. It's old and it's faithful. Let's renew, just like we protect old faithful here, let's renew the mainframe and get more out of it. Serve crowds of people from this data that is on this system. Have it be secure, reliable, and consistent, just like old faithful is on the mainframe. What a great, uh, what a great space Old Faithful is, and what a great thing it is for us to, to try to develop and renew these systems that were developed by such significant people so long ago. I'm Kip Twitchell. Thanks for watching today.